Hi there, it's Kristen from The Knit Cafe. Thank you for joining me for this little video on how to make your first hand knitted scarf. So here I have my materials. I have some super bulky weight yarn, which is category number six of yarn. Um, some wool in the gang, crazy sexy wool. And this one, which I'm actually gonna be using for my scarf project, a hand dyed one from The Fleece Artist, which is a Canadian hand dyer. Um, for a super bulky weight of yarn, you can use something within the range of a 10 to 12 millimeter. Just pay attention to what they recommend on the packaging of the yarn that you're using. Um, when you have yarn that's shaped like these, this is a skein of yarn and you need to wind that into a ball before you use it. If you have yarn that comes like this, you can just use it right away, but like this, wind it into a ball. So I've already done that and I have a ball ready to go. I'm going to be using two balls of this yarn for my project. Each skein had um, 82 yards, so I'm going to be using approximately 164 yards for my project. To begin with, the first step of a knitting project is to cast on your stitches. So I'm going to be... First step for casting on is to make a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, it's a loop that goes through a loop. So I'm going to just start by making the first loop. I'm going to make a loop, but I'm going to make sure that the piece that's on top of my loop is the one that's attached to my ball here. Once I've done that, I'm going to take the yarn and push a loop up through the middle of it so I have a loop coming out of the loop. Then I hold on to that top part and then pull down on both of the ends to create the knot. I want a fairly long tail here. Too short a tail, you won't be able to weave your end in at the end of the project, so at least six inches or so on this end. Then I take one of my knitting needles which I'm using a 10 millimeter needle, and I'm just pulling on the two ends to tighten the knot or slip the knot. Then the first step of casting on, which will get our initial row of stitches on the needle, is to hold the needle with the um, slip knot in it in our left hand and hold the bare needle in the right hand. And then insert the right hand needle into the loop. You're just going right underneath the other needle and through the front part of the loop. That's step number one. Step number two, make sure you have the one that's attached to your ball and wrap the yarn around the needle that you just inserted. So it gets wrapped underneath and then goes over top like this or in a clockwise direction. That's step number two. Step number three, I'm going to keep holding on to this yarn to give it a little bit of tension, go back and hold the both needles in both hands, and then this right hand needle is going to slip underneath the left hand needle, and the tip is going to go through the loop. So the piece that I just wrapped around, I'm pulling it towards me using the needle as the guide through the loop. Once I've done that, I have two loops one on each side. I'm going to hold on to this one and add this loop on so that it can be on this needle too. Um, to do that, I can either just add it on this way or I can put a little twist in it and add it on this way, just as long as you always do it the same way each time. I'm gonna do it this way. So that's my first cast on stitch and that's step number four. So let's do those four steps again. This time I'm going to do the same four steps going into the loop that I just created. So first step, insert the needle. Second step, wrap the yarn around. Third step, go underneath and through the loop. That's the tricky one. And then step number four, hold on to this one and add this loop on. Let's do it again. In, around, through and on, in, around, through and on. And you're going to keep doing this. I'm going to be adding 15 stitches, so 15 loops on my needle. So now I have all 15 stitches on my needle. 
And you might be thinking that it doesn't really look wide enough to be a scarf. Uh, but once we start knitting on it, you'll be surprised at how much it will stretch out and grow. So don't be perturbed if it doesn't, doesn't look like it's very wide on your needle right now. Once you finish casting on, you're going to do the next thing, which is the knit stitch. So before I begin, I always like to push my stitches up towards the tip. And I like my stitches to be sitting just before the needle tip gets narrow right here. Um, once I have them in that position, I'm going to start doing my knit stitch. So knitting is very similar to what we just did with the casting on. The first step is the same. You're still going to insert your needle. That's step number one, just like casting on. Then just like casting on, you're going to wrap your yarn around the needle that you just inserted. That's the same as step number two of casting on. You wrap it around. Step number three is the same too. You're just going to bring your right needle underneath the left and the tip is going to go through the loop. Step number four, however, is different. Instead of adding this loop on, you're actually going to let this loop slide right off the needle. So people who have practiced can usually just like lift that right off, but when you're learning, most people will have to push it off the end of their needle there. And that's step number four when you're doing the knit stitch. Now both our needles are attached together and you're going to keep um, doing that knit stitch till all the loops gather onto the right hand side of the needle. So do those four steps again. First, insert your needle through the front part right there. Second step, wrap the yarn around. Third step, go underneath and through, just like we did with casting on, and fourth step, this loop comes off. Every once in a while, you have to push up these stitches a little bit more so that they're right in the spot where we want them so that it's easy for them to come off the needle, but not too far up that they'll fall off accidentally. So right before where the needle starts to narrow there. So let's do those steps again. Insert, wrap around, through, and then off, in, around, through, and off, in, around, through, off. When you get to be practiced at it, you can do that more quickly. I'm just going to go through it so I can show you what happens at the end of your row. When you're at the end of your row, when you're new to knitting, it's not a bad idea to count your stitches to make sure that you still have the same number that you had when you first cast on. So I'm almost at the end here. You keep doing it the same, same, all the way through. The last stitch is the same too. In, around, through, and then off. And then to do the next row, you just change hands so that the full needle is in your left hand. You want this piece of yarn hanging down in the front, no, no, in the back, in the front like that. And then you start your next row the same way. Insert your needle through the first stitch there, wrap the yarn around, through, and then off. And then continue it back the other way. And this will be the same throughout the scarf. Hi, so now we're ready to add on another ball of yarn. So I've knit the whole piece here, um, the whole one ball, and this is how much I have left. You wanna leave a tail of at least six inches. So make sure you leave a little bit of a tail before you add on your other ball. And then I'm just gonna get my new piece of yarn ready here so it's at the ready and then to add on the new piece I'm just going to start knitting with it so I insert my needle into the stitch I grab my new piece of yarn I make sure also that it has a tail hanging down of at least six inches and then the next step would be to wrap the yarn around the needle so instead of doing that I just make a little loop with my yarn and just put it over the needle hold on to both sides while you just finish off your stitch. Go underneath and through just like a regular knit stitch and then just like a regular knit stitch you let this part come off. Then just go ahead start knitting with your new piece of yarn. Make sure that it's the one that's attached to your ball. It's just on your first um, or your second stitch I guess. Um, don't pull too hard because it will shorten up this tail. So just do your second stitch and by the time you get to your third stitch 
you should be able to just go to your regular attention and not have to worry and just continue knitting. It's always going to feel loose here until we actually weave in those ends. So don't worry about that. If it's a little bit loosey goosey, you can always like play with it a little bit to tighten it up, but it won't fully tighten it until we weave in this end. So we'll just leave that until the end of the project. Hi, so I finished my scarf and I'm going to start doing what's called casting off or binding off at the end of my scarf. Um, so to do that, I just start at the beginning of a row and I just knit two regular stitches. So just like you've been doing the whole scarf, you just knit two stitches and then you're going to take the first stitch that you made and pull it over top of the second stitch and let it come right off the needle. So it's useful to use your knitting needle. Do that. You grab it and you pull it right over top and then just let it go off your needle. Then you knit another one so that you have two again on this side. You grab the first one, the one that's behind. You drag it over top of the second one till it comes right over and then just let it drop off this needle. And you keep doing that. So at the beginning of casting off or binding off, you have to knit two stitches, but after that, you only have to knit one um, because you're only ever going to have two stitches or one stitch on this side at a time. So knit another one, bring one over the other. As you're doing your binding off, it's a good idea to keep your tension a little bit looser. So don't pull very much because you want your stitches to be a little bit looser so that your cast off stitches don't be too tight. If they're too tight, then the end of your scarf will be a little bit pinched. So it'll be a little bit narrower than the beginning of your scarf. So you can see that I'm just knitting one stitch and then bringing one over top of the other. Also, when you're binding off, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of extra yarn. So a little bit longer than what you would need for a regular row. Um, in the case of this 15 stitch scarf with a super bulky yarn, I've left a little bit more than a meter, but a meter should do it. I think I'm going to have like a little bit extra left over. Okay, so I've knit my last stitch. I bring one over the other. I still have some yarn left over. Then at the end, when I have one last loop on the needle, I just have to pull so that the tail, here it is, comes like right through like that. Then once you've completed that, you're ready to start weaving in your ends or almost finish the project. Once you've finished casting off, you're ready to weave in your ends. For that, you'll need a pair of scissors and you'll need something that looks like this. It's just like a regular sewing needle, but it has a blunt end and a big eye. Um, this one has a little bit of a curve in it, but that's not necessary. These are my favorite kind of weaving in needles, darning needles, because it has a really, um, it has this kind of wire eye, which just makes it really easy to thread with chunky yarns. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that on my needle. And then I'm going to show you a way to weave in your ends that is pretty easy for beginners to do. So there's lots of different ways of doing this. So you may look up another way and find a different description, but this one I think is nice and easy. So I'm going to weave in the end through the first row of my project that's not a cast on or cast off row. So I'm going to take this needle and go up into the first stitch in this row. So I just went through the fiber a little bit. So just like that. And then I'm going to pull the yarn through so that it has like a tension that's really similar to the tension of my knitting piece. And then I'm going to change directions and go down through the next loop in that row and then change directions again and go up and then change directions again and go down. I'm going to do this. I don't have to do this for the whole row. I just have to do it. I usually think 10 stitches worth is pretty good. 
that's enough to make it secure. And then once I feel that I've done it enough, I wanna make sure that my tension is the same as the rest of the project. So let's say this is my last one here. I'll just play with it a little bit to make the tension really similar. And then with my scissors, I just snip that off really close like that. And that's it. Um, so I'll have other spots in my scarf to do that. I'll have the one at the beginning of my scarf and I'll have this place here where I added more yarn on. And then once I've completed that, I'll have finished the whole scarf and I'll be ready to wear it. So thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you enjoyed making your scarf and we'll see you next time at the Knit Cafe.